There was a time when motorcycles weren't just machines, they were wild, untamed beasts that screamed at high RPMs and left a signature blue smoke trail wherever they went. These were the legendary two-stroke motorcycles, light, powerful, insanely fast, and ridiculously fun. But today, they're almost extinct. Governments banned them, manufacturers stopped making them, and modern riders have only heard tales of their madness. So, what really happened? Why did these legendary machines disappear? And could they ever make a comeback? Stick around as we break it all down. But before we dive in, hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss our latest updates. Before they were banned, two strokes ruled the streets and the racetracks. Some of the fastest, most legendary motorcycles ever made were two-stroke monsters that left their mark on history. Here are the five most iconic two-stroke motorcycles of all time. Yamaha RD350 1973-1995 The Widowmaker Launched in 1973, the Yamaha RD350 quickly became a legendary motorcycle, selling over 250,000 units worldwide. Nicknamed the Widowmaker, it earned a fearsome reputation due to its lightweight chassis and explosive power delivery. While its 39 horsepower output may seem modest by today's standards, its 143 kilogram weight made it a giant killer, often outpacing larger, more powerful bikes of its time. The RD350 was infamous for its wheelies, high-speed instability, and thrilling ride, making it a favorite among racers and street hooligans throughout the 70s and 80s. It was so fast and unpredictable that insurance companies in some countries refused to cover it. As one of the first true performance motorcycles, the RD350 gave riders an affordable taste of speed, solidifying its place in motorcycle history. Suzuki RG500 Gamma, 1985-1987, a road-legal MotoGP bike. Launched in 1985 as a limited production model, the Suzuki RG500 Gamma became one of the most sought-after high-performance two-stroke sport bikes. With just over 10,000 units produced, powered by a 500cc square 4 engine directly derived from Suzuki's MotoGP race bikes, it was essentially a race machine adapted for the streets. With 95 horsepower and just 154 kilograms, the RG500 was a lethal combination of lightweight engineering and raw power, capable of 0 to 60 miles per hour at under 3.5 seconds, an astonishing feat for the 1980s. As one of the last great two-stroke superbikes before emission laws forced their decline, it remains a collector's dream. Today, mint condition examples of the RG500 Gamma can fetch over $50,000, a testament to its iconic status as a street-legal MotoGP bike. Kawasaki H2 Mach 4 1972-1975, the scariest bike of the 70s. Launched in 1972, the Kawasaki H2 Mach 4 quickly cemented its place in motorcycle history selling over 30,000 units and earning a reputation as one of the most brutal and unrefined bikes of its era, featuring a 750cc triple-cylinder engine that produced an insane 74 horsepower, unheard of in the early 70s. It was the fastest production motorcycle of its time, capable of reaching a top speed of 126 miles per hour. The bike's violent power band made it incredibly difficult to control, and its tendency for uncontrollable wheelies only added to its fearsome nature. Riders who underestimated its raw power often found themselves in serious trouble, leading to its infamous nickname, the Widowmaker, a title it shared with the Yamaha RD350. The Kawasaki H2 Mach 4 was the muscle car of motorcycles, brutal, untamed, and terrifyingly fast, and those who could master it were considered riding gods. Honda NSR 500 1984-2002, the king of MotoGP. Launched in 1984, the Honda NSR 500 became the most dominant two-stroke Grand Prix race bike of its era, securing 10 MotoGP World Championships throughout the 80s and 90s. With a 500cc two-stroke engine that produced over 200 horsepower while weighing under 130 kilograms, it was a machine built for pure speed and aggression, an absolute beast on the track. This legendary bike was piloted by some of the greatest riders in history, including Mick Duhon and Valentino Rossi, both of whom cemented their legacies aboard the NSR 500. 
it remains the most successful 500cc two-stroke MotoGP bike ever made, dominating the sport before four-stroke machines took over. The NSR 500 was so fast and violent that only the world's best riders could tame it, making it the gold standard of two-stroke racing legends. Aprilia RS250 1994-2004, the last great two-stroke sport bike. Launched in 1994, the Aprilia RS250 became one of the most iconic road-legal two-stroke sport bikes, selling over 40,000 units before emission regulations forced its demise. Inspired by Aprilia's 250cc race bikes, it featured a Suzuki-derived V-twin engine, producing 70 horsepower at a screaming 11,000 RPM, making it an absolute banshee on the road. With its razor-sharp chassis and lightweight build, the RS250 was renowned as one of the best handling motorcycles ever made, offering riders a pure unfiltered riding experience. As one of the last great two-stroke sport bikes before bands killed the segment, it has since become a highly sought-after cult classic. The Aprilia RS250 was a rider's dream. No electronics, no assists, just raw two-stroke power in a track-ready package making it one of the most legendary motorcycles of its kind. To understand why two-stroke motorcycles were so fast and fun, let's take a look at how their engines actually work. Unlike four-stroke engines, which complete a power cycle in four separate strokes of the piston, a two-stroke engine does the same job in just two strokes. That means for every revolution of the crankshaft, a two-stroke engine produces power, while a four-stroke only fires every other revolution. A four-stroke engine completes a full power cycle in four distinct stages, making it more efficient and cleaner, but also heavier and more complex. The process begins with the intake stroke, where the piston moves down, drawing in an air-fuel mixture. Next comes compression, as the piston moves up, compressing the fuel for a more powerful ignition. The power stroke follows, where the spark plug ignites the mixture, driving the piston down and generating the engine's power. Finally, the exhaust stroke occurs, where the piston moves up again, pushing out burnt gases through the exhaust valve before the cycle repeats. In contrast, a two-stroke engine completes the same process in just two strokes, making it lighter, more powerful per cubic centimeter, and mechanically simpler, but also less fuel efficient and more polluting. The first stroke combines the power stroke and exhaust, where the air-fuel mixture ignites, driving the piston down while simultaneously expelling exhaust gases. On the second stroke, the piston moves up, simultaneously compressing the fresh air-fuel mixture in the combustion chamber while drawing in new fuel from the crank case, making it ready to fire again. Since two strokes generate power every single revolution instead of every two, they offer instant explosive acceleration, making them legendary for their high-revving, thrilling performance. So, why are two strokes so special? More power for their size. A 250cc two-stroke can match the performance of a 400cc four-stroke. Fewer moving parts, no valves, just simple ports. Lighter and simpler to maintain, perfect for racing and off-roading. But here's the catch, two strokes have one major weakness. Their fuel burning process is dirty and inefficient. Okay, if two strokes were so powerful, why did governments ban them? It all comes down to emissions, fuel efficiency, and durability. Two strokes burn a mix of gasoline and oil, meaning they emit unburned hydrocarbons straight into the air. Studies show that with two-stroke motorcycles can produce up to 20 times more pollution than a modern four-stroke engine. Since two strokes burn oil along with fuel, they consume more fuel per mile, making them more expensive to run. Firing twice as often means more wear and tear, requiring frequent rebuilds. Plus, two strokes were incredibly loud, which led to noise pollution concerns. With emission regulations tightening in the late 1990s, major motorcycle manufacturers phased out two-stroke bikes for street use. By the early 2000s, two-stroke motorcycles had disappeared from showrooms. Some key moments in their decline include 1998, Honda stops making the legendary NSR series. 2002, Yamaha ends production of the RD series. 2008, Suzuki discontinues two-stroke sport bikes. Some countries like India and China even banned new two-stroke motorcycles altogether, but not all hope was lost. 
With new technology, could we see a return of two-stroke motorcycles? Believe it or not, the answer is yes. Brands like KTM and Yamaha are experimenting with direct fuel injection or DFI, which significantly reduces emissions while keeping the two-stroke performance alive. Some companies are developing hybrid two-stroke engines that use electric assist to improve fuel efficiency. While banned on public roads, two-stroke dirt bikes and racing motorcycles are still alive in motocross and enduro racing. KTM, Honda, and Yamaha are already selling fuel-injected two-strokes for off-road use. If emission technology keeps improving, we might see a new generation of road-legal two-strokes. Will two-strokes ever return to the streets? Maybe not in their old form. But with cleaner emissions tech, lighter materials, and electric assistance, they could make a comeback in a whole new way. What do you think? Would you love to see two strokes back on the road? Drop a comment below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for more thrilling content from Tech Motor Show.